are you looking at? I hear you're here to vote. <laughs> Words aren't working for me right now. <laughs> hey everybody, you're watching Cold the Corn Star. I hear you guys are here to watch some high quality, entertaining, fun. How else would I describe this? Honestly, as far as I'm concerned, this is the most entertaining channel on YouTube. So if you're here to watch that, you're in the right place. Okay, okay, it's a matter of opinion, all right? But hey, quick, before we jump into the video, just wanted to remind everybody, if you enjoy the content and you wanna help support the channel, the best thing you can do is hit the thumbs up button. Hey, have you heard? Have you heard that Call the Corn Star has merch available through the link in the description? <laughs> breaking stuff again no i don't know how well you guys can see this or not but there's a little piece that goes in through the back side of this bracket and what that does is it holds the bottom of our bucket or our forks on so when we tip them down they don't fall off well on this side daddy corn star was running it the other day and okay i'll admit i was running it but it broke so now when you go to tip the bucket down it falls off so we got the new stuff ordered and we have to figure out how to get it back in here how it's supposed to be it looks like a 30 second job but we all know how those go. <sighs> I haven't pulled up high enough to get the pin started on the high side with it. Hey, you fixed it. I hope so. Let's try it and see. When we ordered parts for this, I should have had a windshield ordered for the door. Well, why would we need a windshield? So you can re-break it out. Oh my goodness, that's more work than I've seen you do in years. Oh, at least weeks, months. I'm gonna be sore tonight. Oh, come on, Dad. You're running over my corn. Way to push those sticks. Well, that didn't go too bad. No, that actually went real good. Uh, one of our landlords had some trees blow down, so we came over this morning. Uh, I'm gonna have to send you the bill for the corn you ran over, though. While we're out and about, we stopped at one of our fields that we had some tile work done on. There are some mounds of dirt here in this waterway, so we're just using the skid loader to kind of level these off quick. That way, when we're romping along with the combine, we don't accidentally fall in one of these holes and snap off a wheel. Not like that's ever happened before anything. Dad, good job. Way to fill in this hole. Boogity, 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 boys. You know what? I think while we're out here in this waterway, we might as well pull the children of the corn and go do a little corn tour. I will note this. We do seem to kind of have some weak stocks here. Doesn't take very much to pull these off. May not be the biggest ear in the world there, but it's still a nice looking ear. It's starting to dry down though. This corn's short. Uh, I know why this corn's so short. I'm actually standing in an area that had been a perpetual wet spot all season, so the corn's just kind of stunted. There are a few common characteristics. Why am I struggling with saying characteristics? One of those characteristics is short corn, obviously. Then we got kind of this really light green, almost yellow color. And then lastly, we just got some little baby ears going on. But anyway, this corn is actually some of the stuff that got hit by the least amount of winds. So this is probably the best standing corn that we have. And it's actually looking pretty promising out there. We felt some ears in a couple other areas and they're surprisingly dry. Like we could probably come out here and combine today if we wanted to. But we're kind of hoping here maybe in two or three days we can start beans and then once we get done with beans then the corn will be dried down even more and if it dries down enough we won't have to run it through the corn dryer which would save us a lot of money so that's why we're gonna wait on this corn oh so you got your orange juice i got my orange juice in case i get thirsty now on our way back we are going to stop out at a cemetery we need to touch up a grave we covered one last week and it was rainy and wet when we were doing it and the dirt was just not the kind of dirt that we could manipulate so we didn't want to do more harm than good so we're gonna stop by the cemetery quick and fix that Cemetery here, the lady that marks the graves for us asked if we'd pull out a couple of volunteer trees that are growing, and we said absolutely. Them trees weren't very big, but we needed a like a cable that had a noose on it, we could wrap it around it, pull them out. Or you could just learn how to wrap it. 
Now I think today is the day. The day that we are going to finish grading the front yard and we are going to finish seeding it. I spread some dirt out under that tree and I also spread some out here yesterday and it was just a little bit too damp to spread out with the skid loader. But we've had nice breeze, we've had nice sun. This should be dry enough. I should be able to level it out nicely with the bucket. So let's get this smoothed out. Let's get it seeded. I'm gonna have to go find every single garden hose that I can get my hands on. Cause I'm gonna try to get all this watered and I'm also gonna try to creep out into the front yard and water that. It hasn't rained for like a week and looking at the 10 day forecast, there is zero chances of rain. And I don't want my freshly planted Kentucky bluegrass to dry out, so I should probably water it. It's time. Kentucky bluegrass. <laughs> Kentucky bluegrass. This particular blend is called Blue Heat. It is from GCI Turf Services. The guy who owns this company actually has his own lawn care YouTube channel. So if you wanna go check that out, I'll include it up here in the top. This is what this guy's yard looks like. So mine looks like half of that. By the way, if you wanna pick up this grass seed or any other of his grass seeds, I'll include the link to his website in the description. So this is my electric grass seed spreader. I'm gonna flip this switch on. And then that electric motor. <laughs> I got Kentucky bluegrass in my mouth. That motor spins and then we just broadcast this stuff all over. Right now I have it set to put on one and a half pounds per thousand square feet. So we're gonna go over this twice. That way we'll get three pounds per thousand square feet. I believe that's the rate I'm supposed to go at. Hey, we got her seated. We're gonna try to put the groundhog in this building. But we're honestly not sure if that door is tall enough. We're gonna find out. In case you guys are wondering, the groundhog is this machine and this is what we use to dig graves when the ground's frozen. See, it's tight, but it fits. I'm sorry guys, I completely forgot to film what we were just doing. The other groundhog moves at like 1.1 miles per day. So while that was moving that, Cooper and I took this chain, we each walked on each end of it. And then we walked back and forth across everything that I just seeded. That way we can kind of incorporate some of that seed into the dirt. We got some farm activities I need to take care of while it's light out, but then once it gets dark, then I think I'm gonna start watering. Now, historically, when it came to the groundhogs, we usually had them in the heated shop over here at my house, but now we have the 24-row planter in there, and that thing takes up a lot of room. So in order for us to free up some space, we're gonna put them here in the garage off the side of my house now that we finally got this building cleaned out. We got one in here now, we're gonna try to pull the other one right beside it. Oh, oh no, Dad, I think it ran out of gas. I think so too, but when we get ready for using it this winter, I think we got a few hoses. We probably better be changing. So the reason why we're kind of scrambling around doing all this stuff is we have harvest quickly approaching. Like we're probably gonna be picking soybeans in two days and we still have a lot of stuff around the yard that we need to get put away or cleaned up. So one of the things we still have to pick up is this tin. So we overloaded the skid loader just a little bit too heavy. It's not able to lift this by itself. So Cooper's gonna go grab the backhoe and then we're gonna double team this to get it onto the trailer. And then this is going to the scrap yard. So we're gonna lift her up and then I'm gonna back this trailer right underneath it. Well, that don't look good. Now, if I've ever seen anything that's fully DOT approved in my life, this would be it. Okay, now that looks worse than before. 